you guys to join us. Absolutely. Um, but we also want to make sure that you are inviting your students as well, because this is a program that is meant for students. Um, so please, if you are one of the, if, if you are one of our HP IDEA teachers, of course, you are more than, more than welcome to join us, but we also want to make sure that you are um, extending that invitation to your students because this is what the program is for. Yeah, let me know whenever we can begin. Let me know whenever we can begin. And uh, let's wait for people to join and then we'll start. All right? Yeah, exactly. Really excited. We'll, get a, we'll give a few more minutes. It looks like some people are having some hard times. They're, they're joining and then disconnecting. So maybe there might be some conductivity issues. Yep. And typically, the, typically students tend to come a little bit late as, as well. That's fine. Okay. Um Tony, did we send a reminder to the app to the um registrants? Yes. Okay. And then I will make sure I will make sure the, the gaming garage crew is on it as well. Okay, but we're just going to give just a few more minutes for everyone to join us. Um, we have quite a few signed up and registered, but we know how it is with getting home and getting all set up, but we will make sure that we start shortly.
so how much time do we have uh, today for today's session is it strictly one hour or we can time. also take uh, plus or minus some more minutes yeah yeah no if you if 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 you want to take a few more minutes that's perfectly fine and i mean if people need to go they can go but we'd like you to be able to show as much as you can but we typically stick to is around an hour or so that's good okay so i guess just in the interest of time um maybe we'll start at in about 2 minutes we've already we just had some more people join as well so i just want to make sure that no one is missing um thank you for everyone who is is here now and patient as we wait for everyone to join if you can just to give our gaming garage speaker mr am i saying your name correctly is it avi yeah it's avi okay it's avi the baby okay So if you can give Mr. Avi in the chat just an idea of where you're where you are in the world. Yeah, so I uh, am uh, to do a little roll call. I'm connecting from India and I'm really pleased to uh, join this session today. Okay. Thank you. We're pleased to have you. So I am Joy. Um, I am I am from HP Gaming Garage. I am based in um, based in Dubai, originally from the United States. Um, we have uh, Sarah from uh, Nairobi, Kenya, is joining us. Who else is is joining us? I believe I have someone from Ghana here. Just go ahead and just drop into the chat where you're from. And we'll get started in just a few minutes. Okay, Vincent is from Lagos, Nigeria. Welcome, Vincent. Priyanka is here from India. Anyone else want on the check in and let us know where you're joining us from. So what we love about the gaming garage, we come to you um we come to the garage from all over um the world. So we have another from Lagos. Um really big gaming uh, gaming community in Lagos. Um and so we'll and one of our partners is there as well. So we'll start seeing more people from Lagos, I'm sure. Okay, so I will get started without any further ado. Um really excited about uh this uh this workshop. So, we came to know about Mr. Avi because last year or last academic school year, we ran the HP Gaming Garage um first hackathon. And one of our teams was Team H. Um and we have uh fostered a relationship with Team H and now they have gone from being part of the hackathon to actually running workshops in the gaming garage and so uh one of the members of Team H uh was not he was going to do a um was going to do a workshop for us and then he said listen I have someone who's absolutely amazing um and i think that you should have him join and it was mr avi and so he suggested that we do a um a workshop on computational thinking and what that play how that plays into everything that you do when uh designing a video game and so we're so excited um to to have you here i think that are you are you live streaming on your Can you hear me? Oh, can you hear us? Yeah, Hi. I can. I yes, can. now you Yes, Sorry. now we can. Uh my so, internet lag okay. for a Without second. Without further ado, I will turn things over to you. I'm sorry? Uh no worries. Uh now I can hear you back. Okay, great. So I will turn everything over to you. Welcome to the Gaming Garage and thank you so much for joining us. 
that's fantastic uh, so hey guys this is me abhi divedi and uh, i am in this uh, pleasant world of virtual reality right now as you can see uh, hi this is me abhi uh, i have uh, plenty of objects to play around like uh, this uh, ball and we have a basket here as well as you can see there uh, so i'm going to try putting the ball there and i can do it i can uh, also invite some of uh, you as well to join me in this uh, session uh, within virtual reality and you can uh, play it along with me so there are plenty of things to do here as you can see uh, let me just uh, change my camera in order for you to see my vision and what i am actually looking at right now so let me go and switch my camera to my vision all right so now you can see what i am seeing i have plenty of control there i have entire menu to control you can see uh, so many controls i have uh, okay so what else i can do let's see i can go up i can put a marker i can talk about anything right let's let's write something okay right hey uh, hp thanks for sponsoring this uh, so uh, if you are already not seeing my screen on uh, full screen make sure you pin uh, my uh, screen so that you can uh, see what i'm showing you in full screen right i guess let me pin my screen here on my end as well awesome so now as you can see uh, we can do a lot of things uh, there is also a mirror let me show you uh, mirror here i can uh, throw this marker away and say you hi once more i can also try some of my boxing skills with this guy who a little guy okay so now let's come to how all of this is built right who built this and how these things are being built uh, before that let me just bring some of the all right it's fine okay now let me just uh, switch my screen to the slides to the presentation and uh, then we going to talk about how these things are built because that's what we are uh, interested in right all right so let me bring this small screen back up now you can see my controls and what i'm doing at my pc right So now we're gonna go at uh, yeah the presentations, and uh, I'm going to go at the beginning, and then going to present it for you guys so that you can see it is in full screen. All right, can you see it? Yes, yes we can. Yeah, everybody can see it, right? Awesome. Yes. So, thanks uh, Mirai team and uh, thanks uh, uh HP Gaming Garage for hosting me today. And uh, I'm really excited to showcase you and talk about something called computational thinking. So, what is computational thinking exactly? Computational thinking is when you are talking about how uh, computers thinks and how you can communicate with computer in a better way so what sort of mindset you require to communicate to a computer because as a programmer or as somebody who creates games or uh, you have to basically communicate to a computer all the time all right so what sort of mindset you require to talk to a computer that's what we are going to discuss today uh i'm abhi devedi and uh, i've been a medical imaging scientist for uh, three years uh, i have founded uh, one uh, community called extended reality developers of india which is uh, india's largest virtual reality and augmented reality community and uh, i also have a company called uh, unitile studios which does uh, ar and vr services so to begin the talk this is one of my favorite movies movie series and the fourth part is coming which is also really exciting for me uh 
in this uh, there is one famous dialogue uh, in the in the second act of the in the second movie uh, where uh, this monk this monk tells uh, neo that uh, there is no spoon right so i just took that image and added on top of it that there is no spoon as well as no 3d models right so whatever you saw uh, just uh, before we started this uh, i was there in that virtual world and i was interacting with a lot of uh, things i was playing a foot i was playing a basketball i was playing with a let's say one uh, marker or something right i can invite my friends as well i can do all sort of things but none of them is uh, really exist uh, so there is no uh, spoon either 3d models all right so to some of you uh, i'm going to ask this question that what is this uh, if i give you these three numbers how do you interpret them what is this uh, there could be two popular opinions obviously uh, one could be one two three and another could be 123 so what do you suggest uh, what is uh, this what is the popular opinion in the chat 123 or 123 1 comma 2 comma 3 right okay the popular opinion is 1 comma 2 comma 3 awesome uh, actually both are correct they both are ways to interpret uh, these but both ways of interpreting 1 2 3 and 1 20 123 uh, tell something about what you are doing what you're thinking if you are saying let's say 1 2 3 you are interpreting this uh, with the help of like binary number system and counting system right so that how you gonna count things uh, let's say one thing two thing and three thing uh, on the other hand if you are interpreting as 123 you are uh, doing this uh, basic mathematics operation on your head uh, so you are assuming that this P part is at what the one position the second part the say, number two is at tenth position and the number one is at hundred position right we uh, read about it that after uh, one to nine uh, we add the tenth position and then we start adding that we all studied it in the kindergarten it's uh, really easy right so what is happening is basically in our number system there is a base and power the concept of uh, base and power is there right so uh, bear with me so now uh, it's all uh, in in our number system there are 10 characters so we choose the base as 10 right and uh, when it comes to 10 to the power 0 it becomes 1 so it becomes first position 10 to the power 1 it becomes 10 so it becomes 10 position 10 to the power 2 becomes 100 so it becomes the hundredth position right and whenever somebody says 123 he is basically doing this calculation in their heads right uh, multiplying this to this multiplying 10 to 2 multiplying 1 to 3 right and then it then adding all of this uh, results into 123 so whenever you read this and exactly say 123 you do all these sort of mathematics in background but we we do it so good that it's almost become the human way of communication in mathematics it it becomes so intuitive that you don't even have to uh, worry about that what you're thinking or what not right so but there are other number systems as well uh, in fact uh, the number system compute computers communicate in is uh, nowhere near to uh, decimal right it's uh, like in decimal we have uh, 0 to 9 10 places in decimal we have just two places zeros and ones right why we use uh, uh, binary uh, instead of uh, decimal decimal is more human and we all understand decimal right uh, how easily we did this math of 123 but binary sounds like an alien language uh, why do we even chose this the answer is it's really easy to manage just two states and manage in such a way that we can also reduce the size of uh, how the storage works right so let's take this example uh, a lot of you have seen the some sort of regulators which we use in the fan right for the fan we have some sort of regulator 
uh, where uh, there are numbering like 0 to 5 or 0 to 6 and on 0 the fan is off when you rotate it to 1 and the fan is uh, moving but slowly you rotate more towards 2 fan is rotating faster and so on till 6 fan is rotating at the maximum possible speed for this fan right so that is a 6 state switch okay so you have 6 state in which you can switch that particular switch uh, state 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 now uh, reducing that kind of switch to a very smaller uh, size is hard uh, when it comes to mechanics it's uh, really hard to build such a switch that we can also reduce so that's why managing more than uh, uh, let's say two state is really hard however when it comes to binary it could be represented in several ways like if the electric pulse is there or not uh, so that could be a zero or one uh, that if that particular corner reflects light or not that could also become uh, zeros and ones So binary is very easy to maintain, but it's very hard to understand by humans Let me show you why uh, So it uses the very same structure what we did uh, in the decimal places here It has base and power. So what could be the base in this case? Of course uh, in this decimal number system we were using one two and three total all 10 characters so the base was 10 but in this system we have only two characters so the base is going to be just two all right so that has to be the the, the first place has to be the first place the second place has to be the second place and the third place has to be the fourth place it sounds really hard but actually it works like this all right uh, 2 to the power 0 becomes 1 2 to the power 1 becomes 2 2 to the power becomes uh, 2 becomes 4 2 to the power 3 becomes 8 2 to the power 4 becomes 16 so on 2 to the power 5 becomes 32 2 to the power 6 becomes 64 uh, that's on uh, you all know how binary works 2 to the power 10 becomes uh, 1024 2 to the power 9 becomes 512 and and so on so now when it comes to binary uh, how are we gonna do this calculation that if this bit is on right it represents 2 so we are going to add a 2 if this bit is on this represents 4 we are going to add a 4 if this bit is off it represents 1 doesn't care but it is off so we are not going to add anything we, it, it multiplies by 0 and it doesn't add so we it will be 4 plus 2 it will be 6 so that's how we basically convert or communicate numbers into binary so once you get this part when you once you have digested this part let me know and if you have any questions regarding this part uh, before we move ahead please ask me if anyone has any questions regarding this part only any questions anyone yeah they can Type in the chat. I'm looking at the chat, right? Okay. Awesome. No questions, which means everybody got it. Awesome. So now you figured out how to do uh, numbers conversion into binary, right? Uh, but there's a problem. We don't just communicate in numbers. We communicate in all sort of characters and languages are there. Some people know Arabic. Some people know Indian. In the some people uh, type in let's say English so how do we gonna solve that problem okay there's no way to convert uh, let's say we can convert 5 into binary but there's no way to convert uh, English into binary right uh, actually there is uh, we can define some sort of map okay uh, let's pick any sort of map so we pick this map we created this map and on this map we said okay the position of a character character a on this map is going to be 65 why 65 why not 66 there's no logic behind this it's just a map and everybody uh, have to be on 65 that's how max map work right if uh, everybody does not follow the same map they end up at different locations so so do we choose that okay in this map the character a is going to represent the position 65 and similarly b for 66 c for uh, 67 d for 68 and so on right till z z becomes uh, 90 
So similarly, once we have this uh, positions marked up as a number, so we have uh, a character and we can convert that character into number. And now we know we have the uh, math to convert a number into binary. So that's exactly what we did. So if you can convert this into decimal back again, you will find it is 65. Here this uh, J is going to be is going to be 74 right if you convert back it to decimal it will be 74 right so that is how we uh, used a map and this map is called ASCII characters so ASCII binary alphabet uh, is, is uh, this map is called so that's how whenever you say somebody a, a message like hi so your computer or your device converts that hi into these numbers like 72 73 and 33 and then further converts into so let's say for H it converts into this number plus 73 is this number and so on it converts each or three numbers into this sort of now binary coding right and that it send that binary signal to somebody else's phone uh, because of course com for computers it's easy to understand binary and they have no idea what H does mean right they do have no idea what h means but they have idea that what zero and one means so that's how you send messages all right so but you uh, sometimes don't just send messages you also send this how this happened uh, how computers understand images or let's say characters that's what we are going to discuss next right so there is something called color so we all know what is color this presentation is color right <laughs> so we have uh, three parts of color uh, rgb uh, does anybody want to name what does rgb mean so oh, come on guys what does rgb mean type in the comments yes red green and blue right RGB is red, green, blue, and uh, what does HSV mean? HSV, anyone? HSV is hue, saturation, and value. All right. Uh, so in these uh, formats, the color we can store, and these form as as you if you notice uh, the the very uh, design of these format, these are also just three numbers. So the way we store characters, we can also store uh, now colors into your memory or you can or, or into binary. So RGB and HSV are just three values, and based on how, how what bit length is there, uh, which means how many color range you are operating with. Uh, you have uh, let's say if you are operating with a 16-bit color system. Uh, this uh, sorry uh, 8 bit color system this uh, is going to be 0 to 255 value if you are working on 16 bit color system is going to be a much hi uh, higher value right like uh, somewhere around 16,000 or something right so uh, let's say if I have to define uh, this emoji or color of this emoji then I have to type values 72 73 and 33 but wait uh, this number repeated uh, just two slides back there was this number 72 73 33 and it converts into a color and that color is a color used in emojis so actually uh, why emojis are yellow actually it's a fun fact that they use a color uh, of from the message hi and they converted it into a color and they apply to all the emojis that's why most of the emojis are yellow but there is one more thing uh, emojis also have their maps so like a sky map there are so many other maps a sky map is mostly for english but let's say for arabic there is a another map which come in use uh, for hindi there is another map and so on so for each language there is a different set of map and you have to use two persons have to use same set of map to be able to identify or decode their messages so like uh, a has a value 65 in the binary 
similarly this message and this message this poop symbol has the value this uh, what does this say 1,28,469 right so this big value is assigned to this character and so on right so that is how you basically define characters and uh, images and uh, language now let's come to images how do you define images once you said okay uh, this particular thing is some sort of intensity value all right so let's say it's a, it could be rgb values of some kind so okay so this kind of image is called a grayscale image it uses a single channel instead of three channels rgb uh, it it is using just a single channel uh, of call black and white you can also call it black and white image because when the single channel's uh, value is zero it is black when the value is one it is white okay and every value in between is somewhere gray right so it is also called a gray scale image because it's literally the gray scale right so let's say uh, how do we define images we have to convert them into pixel by pixel so this pixel has some value what value it does have 157 right so it look at this image okay 157 what percentage of value should be 157 in between 0 and 1 so it would be something something converted into percentage and it, it applies that per amount of um, saturation or that amount of whiteness to this right it lets that pixel that much bright 157 amount bright however the 255 amount is the maximum brightness and zero amount is the lowest brightness so 157 amount of brightness is somewhere in between similarly it happens for all the pixels and then this picture start taking some sort of shape so as you can assume from this picture only this picture is a, a, a miniature version of Abraham Lincoln picture right all right so now how do you define videos you define pictures now you know how you can compute store in a computer some sort of picture or how you can text somebody a picture but what are videos okay so this is a, a video and this is not just a video this is the video as well because this is world's first video okay so this is a video of a horse riding as you can see but the cool thing about that video is that it's not moving it's just it's just 12 pictures moving very fast right so let's say this is picture 1 picture 2 picture 3 picture 4 it's not there is no such thing as video it's all pictures moving as fast as possible in this case 50, uh, 12 uh, fps 12 fps what does fps means frames per second one single image is called frame and when you move these frames too fast like uh, more than more than 12 more than 15 uh, times a second it, it looks like a video so if, if I go back to this uh, image there is no uh, there is no video in there it's all just images and they are moving at very fast speed and so it looks like a video it looks like the horse is alive but there's no horse alive there right it's all just images playing back really fast so this horse in motion image is world's first image it's it it was a uh, uh, shot in uh, 19th june uh, 1878 6 i guess 78 or 76 okay so now we know how to do characters we know how to do numbers we know how to do colors we know how to do videos now it's time to communicate to your computers because we know their language we know how to represent our language and explain something to them because what you're gonna explain you can talk about maybe your website so you have to explain them characters maybe you can talk about the art you are making so you have to explain some sort of colors so now you have all the tools to communicate to to a machine but now we have to think about that uh, okay what should be the process so the machines are really dumb and uh, they follow very well uh, so let's say if you have to 
tell uh, or communicate to a machine and uh, make it do some sort of task you have to specify your task very 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 correctly in a certain order and with certain amount of description it has to be there so order matters and steps matter so steps in a particular order so when we do those steps in a particular order it becomes an algorithm and and algorithms work like this so you have some sort of input you feed in the input there are sets in particular order which happens like first thing do this second thing do that right and after that some output is generated out of those algorithms so that is how the entire uh, computer industry works so now let's talk about the 3d right I didn't talk about the 3D, how does 3D work? What was that character that you saw me playing in the beginning of the session, right? Who was that character? So that character was nothing more than just points defined in a certain space, all right? So in a certain virtual space, we define some sort of points. So how do you, how do you define points actually? So to define points we have to take first an origin point that these points are defined but in context to what in reference to what right so all the points in one space are defined in reference to an origin okay and what is that origin called that origin is basically 000, zero. all right so that is why in all of your softwares you see 000 as origin because everything what you create uh, goes in reference to that origin point okay that is very very essential for computers to know what you want to build okay so let me talk more about this why there are three number not two number or not one number all right so the answer is there could be one number two number and three number and sometimes even four five and six numbers all right so when we are working on one number, one number graphs, it's called scalar values. When we are working on two number graphs, it's called vector 2D or uh, anything above scalar is called vector. And since it has two variables, so it's called 2D, right? Vector 2Ds. And what uh, we can also name those two variables anything, uh, but we usually name in X and Y because these are our x, -er, x and y axes, right? And uh, when we are working with uh, three-dimensional spaces and 3D objects, then we have to use three numbers. That is why they are called 3D, three dimensions, right? So in this 3D, we have three values, x, y, and z. And what they represent? x represent the very width of something, right? I, uh, y is represent the very height of something. And the Z represent the depth of something. But these X, Y, and Z could be different based on what software you are using. Let's say uh, the Unity uses X, Y, Z differently than the Maya uses. Uh, Unity uses Z in the depth direction. But there are many softwares which uses Z in the up direction, in the, in the uh, let's say, height direction. Okay? So it, it depends on software. But uh, the fundamental concept is three variables representing x y and z of course there are more than three variable vector systems as well we sometimes call them tensor we sometimes call them matrices so there are several uh, several uh, names and uh, ways to represent them uh, multi variable uh, things right so now uh, if i have to define the simplest object in 3d uh, and that is a cube so how do we define that Actually, there is a triangle which is the simplest object in 3D, but uh, the cube, let's say, for our perspective, the simplest object, human perspective. If I have to translate a triangle or, 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 or let's say, a cube into 3D space, 3D virtual space, which means I have to define computer that how does a cube look like, I have to do these sort of things, right? I have to define an origin point. And place my one point at the origin point okay and now the version this uh, v1 which is the next point that has to go in context of origin that where do I want v1 to go 
let's say I wanted one unit in the x axis. So v1 has to be one unit in the x and the rest same as the v0. Okay? So that's how we define v1. Uh, and in this way, we are taking the z in top. So in this way, if I have to define the second point v2, where that v2 should go in the y axis. Okay, so everything like v1, but in the y axis, move one more step. So similarly, what is happening in, uh, let's say, v2, right? So that's how we define each and every point. When we define all points of our cube, these points are called vertices. And uh, this list is called vertices array, or we also call it sometimes vertices data, whatever you want to call, right? So, and then there is an algorithm which is called rendering pipeline which take place and uh, there are certain steps involved in rendering pipeline all right so what are those steps the first uh, step is vertex processing it it means that go through all the lines all the mentioned uh, 3d positions like uh, we have v0 v1 v3 v4 so it's going to go over all these positions and it's going to place them in some sort of virtual space in, the, in its memory right so it's going to do it like this in the second step it's going to figure out uh, that how many pixels are uh, fall inside this triangle and how many pixels are outside this triangle all right so it is going to care about only the triangles which is inside the this particular shape all right so there is also some sort of primitive processing which happens after that uh, in in uh, after vertex processing, but uh, in this uh, uh, the that step is uh, skipped. I, I would say I'll I'll talk about that later. All right. So how many pixels are inside? How many pixels are outside? That is basically called uh, the rasterization process. And uh, after that happened, uh, there is uh, something called fragment processing in which we define okay. These are the pixels which are inside uh, this uh, triangle, but what should be the color for these pixels? And we started coloring them. And finally, we have an image of a triangle that we can output to our display and then it's displayed on. Uh, so that's how we basically render 3D objects. So here is one more thing. Uh, so a better description. The vertex processing happens. After that, the primitive processing is happening, all right? In the primitive processing, it's going to define, okay, how many shapes are being built, how many triangles we can divide it into, all right, whatever the shape we are going to build, how many triangles we can cover up with this, uh, with this shape, all right. Uh, after that, uh, the fragment processing is going to happen in which it's going to define that uh, uh, which uh, part of the uh, process in this, uh, they skip the rasterization, but no worry. Uh, fragment processing happen, pixel processing happen, and then the output is given back to the memory. So it reads from memory in the form of vertex data, which is called, also called geometry and attributes. What are the attributes? The color for the geometry, the texture for the geometry, the maps, or there are multiple kind of map like uh, min maps. There is uh, there is normal maps and so on. All right. So let's say. It is really hard as you can already see to point all this uh, all this data, right? If you have to create this data manually, like defining the position for this point, then this point, then this point, then it is going to take a lot of time to create a human like this, all right? Or a character like anything. So there are a lot of softwares which help us create these uh, sort of human-like characters or sometimes robo-like character, or sometimes even uh, these monsters. Uh, so we use softwares which are called artistic tools, and they help us use our imagination in some artistic way to create these digital creatures. All right, and uh, some good example of these tools are 3D Max, Maya, Blender, ZBrush. Uh, each one of them have some of advantage over other in some use cases, right? Then finally, uh, the export, the files, which could be OBJ file, which could be GLTF or GLB file, which could be, let's say, FBX file. These files are exported from these softwares in form of 3D models. And then 
these are imported back in engines like unity unreal buildbox and so many on there are many multiple engines like cry engine and so so this is this is huge so finally you import them and here you animate them and this uh, ca this is something called camera and this camera is basically responsible for all those rendering algorithm so there is no such thing as object but we see object all the time whenever we are uh, doing this sort of uh, gaming or whenever we are doing this sort of virtual reality or whatever right but there's something missing depth uh, we always play games on a 2d screen you are watching me you were watching me on this on a 2d screen this presentation is going on a 2d screen it's a two dimensional screen how do we gonna perceive depth in this it's a huge question isn't it and the answer is binocular stereoscopic vision so this is how our brain perceive depth so let's say when uh, I, I i want you to do an experiment with me uh, everybody take uh, your right hand up okay and put a thumb up uh, let me use uh, back my headset to showcase you what i want you to do all right i'm back in my headset let me show you the screen what i want you to do can you see uh, guys i'm back in the vr all right so here i am uh, back again so what i want you to do is make your hand straight like this all right and now keep your hand in center and put your thumb uh, up like this and now what i want you to do is look at your thumb from both eyes open and then close left eye all right look now you are looking your thumb from the right eye only now close right eye open left eye now you are looking your thumb from the left eye only all right and now uh, repeat this process after and after multiple times so do it fast okay so close one eye then open another eye close other eye open another eye and so it depends how many eyes you have no matter whatever number of eyes you have you can try doing it at multiple times all right so if you do it rapidly you will find something all right what you going to find i'm going to talk about that uh when you do it rapidly you going to find that you are looking at two version of your hand the version you are looking at from your left eye is something like this where you are looking at this c sort of section more which means the left part of your hand more and the version you are looking from the right eye in which you are looking the b section more which means the right part of your hand more right and uh, but from when you are looking from both the eye you are sort of looking c and b equally which means uh your uh which basically means the left eye and right eye are receiving different images from slightly a different perspective all right and then they are combining those images into one all right then those they are combining uh, those images into one of course there is some data from the left eye which is being ignored some data from the right eye which is being ignored but the result of this operation is that you perceive depth and having two eyes is very very important to perceive 3d depth and we figured out this in 1838 very early since that time we are using stereoscopic binocular vision in several ways so this is picture click from two different angles with a very small distance and this distance is called ipd uh, it's called 
interpupillary distance all right and when you look at from uh, a, a headset like this this is a made a wooden headset wooden and leather and when you look at from this you look it looks like you are looking in a 3d picture not two uh, different 2d picture you are looking at a 3d picture the same concept is being adopted by these uh, glasses uh, you all have seen these sort of glasses in uh, uh, cinema halls and uh, movie theaters so uh, previously we used to use uh, these sort of glasses uh, these are coated blue and uh, red and uh, how they work i will explain in the next video all right but uh, let me explain okay so uh, the the video which we'll show is a uh, it does also contain two pictures one is the red picture and the other one is the blue picture right so when the red picture goes from the red picture red picture disappear and in the red eye we only see the blue picture because red red cancels out and we only see blue picture from the red side and we only see red picture from the blue side and uh, the picture we showcase on the cinema hall or movie theater screen is red and blue both but your eyes receive two different pictures that's why you see 3d pictures in 3d all right so this is new technology which is used by amex and many multi other multi uh, screen theaters this is called uh, active shutter technology in the active shutter what actually they do they have a syncing operation which is happening and in the screen as well there is there are no two images there is just one image at a time but it happens it's in such a way so what they do they show the frame for left eye then they show the frame for right eye then they show the frame for left eye then they show the frame for right eye and they also sync uh, your glasses with a laser and uh, uh, that uh, the when the left eye image is shown the right eye uh, puts a shutter on top of it and when the right eye image is shown the left eye puts a shutter all right so similarly these uh, glasses has a shutter it's a chemical based shutter which happens uh, all right so that's how basically they sync uh, and that is why it's called active shutter so to record the such 3d movies you require to capture two images right that is the only way and that is why these sort of cameras are in use uh, this one is from panasonic used for uh, 3d capture all right so as you can see there are two lenses and these two lenses uh, capture two different images for eyes and that's how you uh, sometimes get uh, pictures like this uh, they captured this uh, dinosaur from this camera actually i'm kidding this is computer generated graphics all right but okay you can notice something here there is a red part which is more noticeable and here there is a blue part which is more noticeable all right so you can see there is a, the red part will be filtered out from the uh, from the uh, red eye and only blue part will pass so the blue one will be thoda left shifted and the right uh, the red image will be thoda right shifted that's how uh, it's going to look like and the the more difference in the two images is the more 3d things is going to be looking like right so that's how you basically uh, these 3d pictures are produced and uh, if you have a glass you can also watch this on youtube all right now let's come to this uh, this sort of camera is called 360 camera so facebook has a company and a facebook product is called uh, uh, the insta 360 and uh, this company produces uh, cameras uh, which are 360 cameras one of the best uh, 360 cameras and this has multiple cameras 1 2 3 4 5 6 It's surrounding in a circular manner and when you capture from this you capture the surrounding shot which means uh what you capture is everywhere all right we are capturing here loin but we can also rotate this we can also see other other version we are looking at up we are looking at down 
we can look anywhere we want i can look what is happening so when you capture from that sort of camera like this you capture all the surrounding you cap you can look at anywhere you want in this uh, sort of image so that is how it is captured it's all stitch captured and stitched together in such a way that it becomes a dome and you can watch anything anywhere right so that is how 360 works then there is also one technology called a uh, volumetric capture which is getting popular uh, these days so in which you can see there are a lot of cameras one camera two camera in such a way and they are uh, they, these cameras are added in a circular manner uh, on top of this is also some cameras and in the bot in the in the mid there is a space to stand or perform and everything else is green green lit all right so green is there to so that we can uh, abstract or uh, clear out the images and when you capture images from all these cameras in in a circular format then you capture image from all the possible angles so all the all the images from the all the possible angles are being captured and after that uh, a 3d coin kind of a uh, structure is being captured so that is also an alternate of creating because as you know modeling takes a lot of time a lot of efforts so these sort of cameras are being used these sort of camera rigs are being used to minimize the effort and and create a, and capturing in much more uh, uh, better 3d quality there is an app which you can uh, watch uh, uh, about and that app uh, provides you a lot of uh, 3d models and you you can uh, watch and uh, we we uh, read through multiple times uh, i'll i'll cover history of virtual reality in some other session but uh, if you have any queries regarding it you can reach to me at several channels uh, i have a youtube channel as well which you which i recommend you guys a lot uh, so this is a channel is called xrdi and you can check out multiple sessions of mine multiple uh, videos related to this uh, to learn more about uh, what we do and uh, what how you can uh, learn stuff all right so if you have any questions regarding this session please uh, do ask okay everyone well first thank you so much mr arvi that was so uh, so in, uh, very interesting um does anyone have any questions any questions now would be the time to ask So I guess, um, Mr. Avi, I would be interested in knowing because you said that you're in the medical field, is correct? Uh, I uh, can you repeat that question? Are you in the medical field as well? Yeah. So how did you how did you find yourself to be involved with um, with VR coming from the medical profession? No, I'm not a medical professional in that way. Uh, actually. Okay. I'm more uh, a computer scientist than a medical scientist. I okay. use uh, computers and uh, 3D graphics to help uh, doctors in visualizing their stuff, uh, in visualizing a patient and working on a patient. Oh, so you use VR in regards to like medical training and, yes. and oh, very interesting. And so then now, did that come about from did so did your interest in gaming come about from um the work that you did in the medical field or did the work that you do in the medical field come about as as a result of your love of of um 3D um 3D modeling and AR how which so how did I that started I started with uh, 3D technologies back in uh, 2012 and uh, then I was completely working on games and then I did a lot of research as well uh, when it comes to physics uh, of games and AI of games and how geometry is being generated procedurally, all these sort of uh, things. Uh, based on those, I got chance to work on this uh, medical imaging industry as well. 
where I worked on a dynamic uh, model generation and uh, how you can use uh, patient data, SCL files and MRI and CT and generate a patient out of those and uh, yeah, all those stuff. Wonderful, thank you. So one of our question, one of our students has, a, or one of our participants has a question about, which is a good resource to learn about human anatomy on a desktop? Do you have any suggestions? Hmm. I didn't figure out what is a good resource on a desktop, but if you uh, have a virtual reality headset, uh, there is a very good human anatomy app, uh, which you can try out. And uh, the name of the app is, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Share Care uh, VR. So they, there is Share Care VR, which uh, I guess you, you you must be seeing on my screen as well. Our uh, screen is off. That you can uh, definitely visit or check out in virtual reality. I'm not much aware of uh, what are the options on desktop, but there are several. Uh, I if you even Google, uh, you are going to get some of these apps. Nice. Um, we definitely, uh, last year, hackathon that we had, we had a doctor come on and she spoke about how they use um, VR to, to help with patient care, so, uh, specifically because she was a pediatrician um, and she dealt with, with um, children who had pretty serious illnesses and had to have quite invasive testing. And so they use like the uh, virtual reality glasses to kind of distract them when they were having um, procedures that were painful. And so I think it's amazing that you're, that gaming is being used in so many industries. Yeah. The idea of this session was to clear the doubts. Uh, basically we kept on doing uh, multiple works regarding gaming and virtual reality, uh, but we forget the basics and uh, we forget that uh, since there is no spoon and since there are no 3D models, we can literally do anything what we want and whatever we imagine and achieve that with uh, the technology uh, of computer graphics. So that is the essence of the session. So since there is no spoon, you can do whatever. You can bend it in any way. Absolutely. And I think that that came across very well. We want to thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time, your effort. It was obvious that you put a lot of work into your um, into your presentation. And I'm sure that uh, the participants, along with myself, were very, very grateful for having you here. So thank you so much for uh, hosting me. And uh, yeah, we'll further collaborate on this uh, uh, whenever the students find it uh, well. We'll, we'll definitely do we it. We would love. We'd love that. Um, I know that they would probably appreciate a more hand, like a hands-on um, workshop where they can start learning how to build. So what I'm going to do, I just dropped, um, I just dropped a, a form into the chat. So everyone, please give us our your, give us your feedback on this session, but then also let us know what are some other um, workshops that you would like to see, um, either with Mr. Avi or in this uh in this i guess this this type of, of workshop and so that we can start working on ways to either bring mr avi back to do more or find other speakers who would be able to um to run workshops in areas that you would be interested in learning more about so also i just want to remind all of the so if you are a teacher in the hp idea program and you've joined the session we are more than happy to have you join our sessions, but we also, what is most important is that you're sharing these sessions with your students because these sessions are meant for students. So of course you are welcome to join, but if you join, bring a student along with you. Don't come by yourself. So we look forward to seeing you guys again in the Gaming Rush. Please do fill out um, the survey or the, that we just, um, gave you, oh, someone's, someone's coming into the waiting room now. Uh, we're all wrapped up, <laughs> but, um, thank you so much. Uh, no, yeah. and yeah, thank you. My specialty in virtual reality. So definitely we'll do some sort of hands-on next time. We would love to have it. So I'll be in touch and then we can figure out when we can do that. But everyone, if we can just give a big thanks to, uh, Mr. Avi for his time. Um, and thank you.
you all for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming to the Gaming Garage and we will see you. Um, this week we have, um, tomorrow we have a student showcase um, with students, uh, with game designers and um, they're also uh, animators from um, three different groups in South Africa with IT Think. So they are going to be showcasing their um, showcasing their uh, prototypes tomorrow. If you guys joined us for Alex uh, Pune's session last week um, on Saturday for um, the his session for National Comic Book Day, he is going to be showcasing his game 